In this video, we will discuss alpha receptors, their types, mechanism of action, different types of alpha agonist and antagonist. Few exam questions before we start the topic and get the answers after the topic is over. Question number one, what's the difference between phentolamine and phenylephrine? Number two, which alpha blockers are used in benign prostatic hyperplasia? Number three, what's yohimbine? and when it's used. Number four, what's the effect of alpha-2 stimulation on lipolysis and insulin secretion? Number five, which substances are reduced by alpha-1 stimulation? Number six, what's the effect of alpha-1 agonists on heart rate? And number seven, What's the side effect of prazosin? Now let's discuss the alpha receptors. There are many types of alpha receptors, but two types of alpha receptors are important, alpha 1 and alpha 2. We'll discuss them in this discussion. Alpha receptors respond to both adrenaline and noradrenaline, and they respond more to noradrenaline than by adrenaline, whereas beta receptors are activated more by adrenaline. Where are the receptors located? They are located on the effector cell surface and combined with G proteins in the plasma membrane. So the receptors are at the effector cell surface. What are the effects of high and low levels of catecholamines? Catecholamine if high level, they decrease the number of the receptor that leads to decreased response to catecholamines. And if catecholamine levels are low, then there is an increase in the number of receptors that increases response to catecholamines. So increased catecholamine decreases receptor decrease response to catecholamine. Decrease catecholamine, increase number of receptor and increase response to catecholamines. Why does orthostatic hypotension occurs in pheochromocytoma? Orthostatic hypotension in pheochromocytoma is due to decreased number of receptor because there is increase in noradrenaline production in pheochromocytoma. So despite increased noradrenaline, there is orthostatic hypotension due to decrease in the number of receptor. What's the disadvantage of chronic use of adrenergic blockers? Chronic use of adrenergic blockers increase the number of receptors, so increase the response to catecholamine. So what happens that withdrawal of the adrenergic blockers produce hypersensitivity to sympathetic stimuli. So adrenergic blockers, chronic use increases the number of receptors and increased or hypersensitivity to sympathetic stimuli. Abrupt withdrawal of Clonidine, which is a centrally acting alpha-2 agonist, not an antagonist, it's alpha-2 agonist, may cause rebound hypertension due to upregulation of the receptors because clonidine causes decrease in catecholamines, noradrenaline release. So that causes upregulation, increased number of the receptor, causing rebound hypertension. Now mechanism of action of the alpha receptor. First, alpha-2. Alpha-2 combines with the G proteins and they inhibit the adenylate cyclase, so decrease the cyclic AMP. That decreases the noradrenaline release. So, alpha-2 receptor stimulation decreases noradrenaline, so they are sympatholytic. Alpha-1 receptor has no effect on the cyclic AMP. So, where does it act? It acts on the G proteins and then combines with Phosphorylase C that stimulates inositol pyrophosphate 3 and that increases the calcium. A rise in calcium causes protein kinase to start phosphorylation. So alpha 2 receptors inhibits adenylate cyclase, inhibits cyclic AMP and decreases noradrenaline release. Whereas alpha 1 does not have any effect on cyclic AMP, it stimulates phosphorylate C that increases the calcium and that causes phosphorylation. Phosphorylase C also acts on DAG, diacylglycerol. DAG also acts as a second messenger and it starts protein synthesis. All these substances, cyclic AMP, 
phosphorylase C, calcium and diacyl cholesterol are the second messengers. Now locations of the alpha receptor. Both alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors are postsynaptic in the arterial and venous vasculature. Alpha 1 receptors are only postsynaptic whereas alpha 2 receptors are also present presynaptically in the nerve terminal. Alpha-1 receptors are present in the vascular and visceral smooth muscles, gastrointestinal and urinary bladder sphincters and also in the pupillodilator fibers. So what does alpha-1 receptor stimulation causes? Alpha-1 stimulation causes vasoconstriction, a smooth muscle and a sphincter contraction. So it increases the rate and force of cardiac contraction. It causes midriasis present in the pupillodilator fibers, causes pupillary dilatation, and it increases glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, increasing the sugar, whereas it decreases the renin release. Now, let's discuss the presynaptic alpha 2 receptors. The presynaptic alpha 2 receptor activation causes negative feedback control that decreases the norepinephrine. It's a sympatholytic, it inhibits adenylate cyclase, decreases the cyclic AMP and decreases the noradrenaline. So it's sympatholytic. So what are the effects of alpha 2 receptor activation? Number one, decreases noradrenaline secretion. Number two, it also decreases acetylcholine release and inhibits the cholinergic nerves. Number three, it relaxes the GI smooth muscles, decreases lipolysis, decreases insulin secretion and decreases central sympathetic flow and it also causes platelet aggregation. So it decreases all the functions which I just mentioned here, decreases noradrenaline, acetylcholine, relaxes the smooth muscle, decreases lipolysis, insulin and sympathetic outflow. Now alpha receptor agonists and antagonists. The alpha receptor agonist and antagonist may be alpha 1 selective, alpha 2 selective, non-selective alpha 1, alpha 2 and non-selective alpha beta receptors. Now selective alpha 1 agonist, the mnemonics is PPM parts per million, phenylephrine, pseudoephedrine and methoxamine. The alpha-1 agonists, what are the uses? They are used in hypotension, hemostasis and nasal congestion. So what are the effects of alpha-1 agonists? Alpha-1 agonists like phenylephrine primarily act on vascular smooth muscle causing vasoconstriction so they increase the blood pressure. They increase the peripheral vascular resistance, increase venous return, increase arterial and diastolic blood pressure, but they cause reflex bradycardia. They increase the glycogenolysis and decrease the renin release. So alpha-1 agonist stimulation will cause vasoconstriction, increased peripheral resistance and increase in blood pressure increased glycogenolysis. The only function that is decreased by alpha-1 agonist is that of the renin release. Selective alpha-1 antagonists or alpha-1 blockers. What do they do? They decrease the peripheral resistance and decrease the blood pressure opposite to that of alpha-1 agonists and they do this by dilating both the resistance and the capacitance vessel arteries and veins. So what are the example of alpha-1 antagonist? Mnemonix is DPT, doxazosin, trazosin and terazosin. Trazosin is the alpha-1 antagonist that decreases the blood pressure by dilating both resistance and capacitance vessels as I already told. So what's the side effect of trazosin? There is a first dose postural hypotension that may cause myocardial infarction and stroke and the other side effect is nasal stuffiness. Prazosin is also used in vasospastic Berger's disease causing vasodilatation. Now alpha-2 agonists and antagonists. Selective alpha-2 agonists, they inhibit the sympathetic center in the brain stem, so they are sympatholytics. So alpha-2 agonists, examples are clonidine, catapress, alpha-methyl-dopa, aldomet, 
Reserpine and Guanfacine. So we just did the alpha 2 receptor stimulation action that they decrease everything, decrease the blood pressure, lipolysis, insulin secretion, for example. So alpha 2 receptor stimulation will suppress the release of noradrenaline. So they decrease the peripheral resistance and decrease the blood pressure. They are used in the treatment of number one, hypertension. And number two, they are also used in ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorders. The centrally acting alpha-2 agonists are used in autonomic neuropathy that occur due to baroreceptor denervation. Alpha-2 agonists cause meiosis, so they are used in glaucoma. Uh, remember, alpha-1 causes pupillary dilatation, whereas alpha-2 stimulation or agonists cause meiosis. So used in glaucoma. Alpha-2 agonist on withdrawal, they may produce rebound hypertension. Because normally they produced hypotension, so they are used in hypertension. But withdrawal of alpha-2 agonist, clonidine, may cause rebound hypertension. Selective alpha-2 antagonist. Example is yohimbine and mirtazepine. Yohimbine is used in postural hypotension. Now, non-selective alpha-1 and alpha-2 blockers, formula is PPT, parts per trillion, or PPT, phentolamine, regitin, phenoxybenzamine, which has a slow, prolonged duration of action. Phenoxybenzamine, slow, prolonged duration of action. And number three is tolazoline, priscoline. So, the alpha-1 and 2 blockers combined, non-selective, Alpha-1 and alpha-2 blockers are phentolamine, phenoxybenzamine, and tolazoline, priscoline. The non-selective alpha-1 and alpha-2 blockers are primarily used in pheochromocytoma. Now, non-selective alpha-beta blockers, they block both alpha and beta receptors. Examples are levitalol and carvedilol. Now, answers to the questions. What's the difference between phentolamine and phenylephrine? Phentolamine is a non-selective alpha-1, alpha-2 blocker, whereas phenylephrine is alpha-1 selective agonist. Phenylephrine is alpha-1 selective agonist, whereas phentolamine is non-selective alpha-1, alpha-2 blocker. Question number two. Which alpha blockers are used in benign prostatic hyperplasia? Selective alpha-1 blockers are used in benign prostatic hyperplasia. Examples of selective alpha-1 blockers are prazosine, doxazosine, and terazosine. Mnemonics is DPT. Question number three, what's yohembine and when it's used? Yohembine is an alpha-2 antagonist and is used to treat postural hypotension. Question number four, what's the effect of alpha-2 stimulation on lipolysis and insulin secretion? Alpha-2 stimulation decreases everything. So it decreases lipolysis and decreases insulin secretion. Question number five, which substances are reduced by alpha-1 stimulation? It reduces the renin release. Question six, what's the effect of alpha-1 agonist on heart rate. Alpha-1 agonist like phenylephrine causes vasoconstriction, increased peripheral vascular resistance, increases the blood pressure. But the side effects is reflex bradycardia. What's the side effects of prazosine? Prazosine, it's an alpha-1 antagonist, decreases the blood pressure by dilating both arteries and veins and it may cause first dose postural hypotension that may cause myocardial infarction or stroke. Other side effects is nasal stuffiness.